Hello. We are joined by a mystery woman today. Who is hiding behind the cards? Marisol? Marisol. (laughs) (laughs) I had to do it. I had to do it. (laughs) Joined by the wonderful, charismatic Peggy Blow from the new series, Free Ridge. That's uh, from Netflix. That has just come out here recently. Thank you so much for being with me this afternoon. And of course, the the drama, the intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's a nice little turn of events. <laughs> yes. I mean, obviously, with where we ended things on, on my block last season, that was a quite a turn of event. Uh, sort of unexpected, obviously, here for the audience. <laughs> quite unexpected for the audience. Our beloved Marisol, uh, we lost her in, in the finale. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> How in advance did you know, or were you reading along to the scripts and suddenly you came up and, you know, this is, did they give you any heads up? <laughs> it, it was very organic, actually, the way it happened, because it was in the script, because Marisol said, in the, in the last episode, she said, I wanted to outlive my evil twin sister. Ding, 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 ding. It's like opportunity, Swift, twin sister, let's roll with it. And they did, they did, you know? And, it's, and it really does add a lovely element of intrigue to, to uh, our whole Free Ridge environment that you know, it's it's like that little tidbit from outside that comes in and stirs things up and gets everybody all activated and 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 in the game. You know, it's great. And I love that it not only obviously does it have that effect for the audience, but like for Henny and Ruben at the same time too. That they're constantly like, "Is that my mom? <laughs> <laughs> She's alive." <laughs> The, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to give you details, but because I, you know, I want everybody to have had a chance to see the show. But However, one of my favorite scenes is the graveyard scene. That's probably one of the funniest scenes in the show. And I love going for the funny, uh, but uh, Eric just, he knocked that out. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> but yeah i uh the whole the whole uh intrigue with with uh mariluna is is just it's a lovely lovely twist and what an opportunity for for me um you know let me go ahead and say it you know i mean you don't get a chance to do this kind of thing that often you know to play your own twin uh like what how, how many actors can you name on one hand in the last 15 20 years you know we've been able to do that so that's an honor in itself and I like the whole Mrs. Habersham kind of feel and Grey Gardens, you know. I mean, such a thinking crew, man. What a great team we have. The, such, it's a clever twist. The, the writing mm-hmm. is so clever and, and it all makes sense. And again, it feels like breadcrumbs. So like when you, you mm-hmm. left us with the twin and then we sort of start off with this woman who's shrouded in mystery. She's got a scarf. You know, she, she's she got a, some secret backstory that we don't know. But that's the again, the the energy and the connection of On My Block as well, um, because that's exactly again, where we sort of started in season one of that show as well, that we got to, we got to have that, that, that trail that we take and who does it connect us to and the lines that it draws and where does it end up and, and all of that, which is a hallmark to what makes that show so special as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, perfectly, to be perfectly honest, there would be no free ridge without all my blocks. You know, uh, I was asked uh, on the on the on the line at the premiere, you know, I was asked, you know, what along with the other actors, I was asked, what show would you like to see Free Ridge coupled with? And without hesitation, I said on my block. I mean, why can't the core? Can you imagine the core four being the great eight (laughs) and all right there in Free Ridge, you know? And then, I mean, we all we obviously um, throughout the the season get to we get little things of the the prior 
cast connection or like the prior character mm-hmm. connection mm-hmm. obviously with you know jamal mm-hmm. and um with ruben mm-hmm. uh, we got to hear a little bit about like where they are what they're up to um and my favorite one of my favorite things i know that you, you talked about the graveyard but one of my favorite things was um ruben saying like did jamal date my mom <laughs> that was the the craziest thing because i was like that is so abuelita and jamal like that is their (laughs) their essence is because that was their relationship is like right what were they doing in season one like were they all they were always clowning but they were best friends but they were like such you know like their dynamic always was um a fun one that i really appreciate so much because it felt like she was she, she i mean she really was part of their crew she became part of their group for sure. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I like that because you removed ageism. That show removed ageism from the world. And I just, I thought that was another special element of On My Block to start that group um, in that there was no thought about age. I mean, for those two characters, they just saw, they just saw the, 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 the oneness in self, in each other. You know, they kind of completed each other. They bounced off each other. They were just two people together who enjoyed each other. And I think that's great. And a lot of fans responded to that, uh, saying, I even had a couple on uh, TikTok telling me, uh, oh, wow, you know, (laughs) I never really talked to my grandma before, but she's cool. (laughs) And I I think you and and Brett really set up that great dynamic and um yeah. the nuances that happen between the two of them so well the, the instant chemistry and the way that you kind of bounced off one another felt really organic and natural and I, it was I, I felt that way with 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 Mary Luna and Gloria at times too I got yes. that feeling to yes. the two of them that it felt like a little bit of the old I don't want to call it old, but you know, like the connection of, 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 of on my block again, that really yes. naturally have been interwoven into free Ridge. So mm-hmm. I really like that dynamic that it mm-hmm. felt like, like the two peas in a sense <laughs> were, were together in that way. Yeah. 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 And she's wonderful. Oh, Kayla, I love playing. Oh, we have a great time playing off each other, you know, and, and we're just getting started. You know, this is season one and we're just getting started. So I'm looking forward to all of those relationships building as we go along. Yeah. And finding out more juicy stuff. <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, well, with Kayla, uh, the the relationship that gets developed between Gloria and Mary Luna, though, is, is really wonderful because she's obviously, again, alone. Mary Luna is alone. Yes. But hidden yes. herself for, for all these years for reasons. Mm-hmm. And then kind of Gloria ends up opening her up and then they become best friends and then they get this like fun Mm -hmm. dynamic and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the way that you banter with each other and then how quick that 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 ends up being like how fast and how how much you guys roll with each other and that same vibe that kind of clicks each other like it, it clicks each other it feels like you're you know like you're you end off where she starts and she starts yes Yes, yes, because they dynamic that you yeah. build together through that as well. Yeah, the humanity uh, in within those two characters. I mean, with all the characters, but those two specifically, um, is just so sweet and so tender. Because here's this woman who's been alone for a lot, quite a bit, of, <laughs> way too long, <laughs> and here's this young girl who has her own loneliness to deal with because she's been because of her mother's death she's her mother's been removed from her life so she doesn't have that older female influence and the absence of a mother is devastating and so now not that mariluna replaces her mother by no stretch of the imagination however she does fill a gap for her and they find each other and that's that's such a a beautiful thing because uh they what what mariluna needs she finds in gloria and what gloria needs she finds in mariluna and for that briefest of moments in time when they're together Gloria gets to not be the mom in the household Gloria gets to not be have to be the responsible one she can uh, just relinquish all that and just be who she is in the moment with Mara Luna and that's precious I love that yes it's so beautiful to see because it's such a quirky relationship but it's so fun because it's sort of like 
someone who has so much in their house and but no one else to obviously enjoy it with you just got ice cream machine and they play mm-hmm. see <laughs> <laughs> when they're talking about the pool <laughs> yeah 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 sort of like you know kind of like scrooge in a in a way um at times mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but they, they learn from each other they get lessons yes. from each other and, and you know one opens their heart and their house and mm-hmm. we sort of also learn a lot um through free ridge about the different dynamics of what family means you know who family yes. is and, and why they're important to us that's a big part of also um within the finale of course too when we see the thanksgiving so i think there's a lot of beautiful layers that have been interwoven into free ridge that really connect so well together like we continue to talk about because it's because it is a family-centric show it, this is they are it, you, no matter what that be blood you know be blood or not <laughs> exactly exactly and sometimes in life you know well all the time in life we have the family we're born into and then we have the family we create for ourselves as we go along yeah and one is just as important as the other (laughs) absolutely and um we talked a little bit before about this kind of twin twist and I'm actually an identical twin. <laughs> oh, how cool is that? So it's nice to see um, that the portrayal, of course, of, a, of another set of twins, but um, <laughs> such a feisty dynamic. <laughs> we know who Abuelita has, you know, is as a person and how feisty her, her, um, her personality is. And then we get to see Maria Luna, who's sort of a flip of a coin, but also quite not, you know, not too far on like from Abuelita either. Um, yeah. this, she, we obviously sees quite a, some certain distinctions. We have the scarf. Uh, we have this special box, but through this box, it leads us to learn a lot more about these two individuals and, and their personality. Is this something that you kind of constructed as far as like the background for the characters together with the Free Ridge writers? Or is this something that you kind of either the through the aesthetic of the, you know, with the scarf and the outfit and her voice um, at times seems quite different um, than Abuelita voice, Marisol's voice? Yes, yes. Um, it, well, you know, Lauren and I went, talked about it in depth for sure, uh, because it's, you know, we had to keep in mind they are identical. So that's, you know, they're going to look alike. So, you know, we're not trying to fool anybody or anything like that. They're identical twins. Uh, but but the the fun and for me, are the, uh, the devil's in the details. Uh, that's a, and that's where the fun comes in is that that slight difference in the walk, that slight difference in the carriage of the shoulders, because she is her own person, just as Mari Sol was her own person. Um, I, I know at one point, and, I, you know, we were probably just kicking it around and talking, but uh, Lauren even talked about the possibilities. And I don't know if they would do a split screen, but having Abuelita and uh, Mar- uh, Luna together in a scene early on, you know, of course, before, before Abuelita passed. <laughs> you know, but uh, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, we can pull that off. That would be fun. But yeah, th- but definitely um, there was discussion about it um more with um and the writers had their input through lauren uh because sometimes it's just easier to talk to one person to get the job done yeah she certainly you know carries herself in in a certain way but again we we also see the patented (laughs) kind of oblates of personality in in certain aspects as well and yes um, yeah, especially when she says, you know, I'm, I'm a rich bitch and I, I, I enjoy games, you know, she likes to play. She's got a playmate now. She hasn't had anybody to play all those wonderful games with or even have any company uh, for uh, however many years she's been in that house by herself. Yeah, she, she's been quite shut away, you know, physically and yeah. emotionally yeah. as well. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh, digging a little deeper into that story there's a lot of meat there yes well there's hints of that you know what happened to her husband did she kill her husband um, and and we sort of leave that uh, you know unanswered uh, with a lot of other mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, but that's also again you know what sets up for a season two of free ridge so well because 
not only did they give us all that, but then they gave us like a whole other map for trying to find the roller world money again. Yes, yes, and yes. I and I love the fact that uh, I believe they uh, uh, showed this map, stitched this map uh, to leave it for the kids to find again. And it's and that through line gets taken to her sister. I mean, don't you love it? I mean, you know. And the whole uh, the 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 dialogue about uh, the t the whole intrigue behind the tarot cards and one sister will be the demise of the other, and how we're led to believe it could be those the two young girls, and that's not who they're taught. I was like, ooh, love the intrigue in that in that uh, regard for sure. Yes, I mean, it keeps you guessing, it keeps you on your toes. Do you, you know, it's not for face value at all the time, too. So that's oh. what's that's what kind of keeps you on the edge um, of your couch, just as much as the interrelationships that we see and the different lines where it draws. And I feel like you need one of those like whiteboards, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> connect the strings everywhere <laughs> when it comes that's to right. the Free Ridge and like the On My Black mm -hmm. universe of things. And mm -hmm. that's fun. Like that's fun to watch. Who doesn't like to enjoy that type of mystery where it leads you in one direction but that may not be the right way or yes. it leads you into some other pitfall and you have to get out of that mm -hmm. before you can get into something else mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's the that's the great nostalgia of of shows that you, you kind of don't get that much anymore it's like sort of like a mm -hmm. choose your own adventure in a way yes yes i agree One of one of my favorite scenes, like I said, was was the scene in the graveyard, and and well, you said, excuse me, was the scene in the graveyard. But there's just so much, and I there is. talk a little bit about some of the mansion scenes that we get, um, and um, we talk about the hide and go seek, but we also this this Thanksgiving dinner that is such a, a horror show that leaves maybe little to be thankful about with the food at least, but. The company <laughs> ends up becoming. Uh, yeah, yeah. Girl, girl That's hilarious. <laughs> yes. What was it like for you to film in this kind of elaborate house and get to spend time, um, kind of piecing out the the you know the relationship between Gloria that way and um, mm -hmm. kind of fleshing out your character at the same time too, because it kind of mm -hmm. offers those two dynamics at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too for me personally. Uh, when I and this just came to me, it's that Gleska Marshall, who was um, a protege of Alan Nazimova, the stage who brought the Stanislavski method of acting to the United States. This is going back a ways. This lady was uh, Gleska Marshall was uh, in casting in uh, Hollywood. Gosh, many many years ago, the thirties, forties. It before my time. Well, I got to meet her when I was a teenager and I was doing theater. Uh, and uh, my father was stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia, and Springer Opera House was the state theater of Georgia. So I'm doing every play that they do. I am the theater kid in town. And uh, she saw my performance along with Emily Woodruff, and I think we were doing South Pacific at the time. And they, offered to pay four years of college for me based on what they saw me do on stage. And now I'm, I, you know, I'm 16. I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the catch? And they were like, well, two things. I was like, okay, here it comes. She says, you have to finish college. And secondly, when you're in the position, you have to do for someone else what I'm doing for you. And I said, that's it. So to be playing this role of this older woman who gives this kid an opportunity, uh, and based on based on this finance to get her father her father's health squared away, it's just you know art imitating life. <laughs> you know, it's 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 those little nuggets come up, and it's fun to see how how that works out. It's like destiny and fate and yeah, all these things yeah. rolled into one. And that's, yeah. again, a lot about what the show Free Ridge speaks to. Yes. To, mm -hmm. um, whether it's this mm -hmm. curse or, uh, you know, whatever the uh, uh, bruja, <laughs> you know, <laughs> predicting or, you know, whatever. Oh, and Juanita. 
Is that not wonderful? Oh, oh my goodness. What a wonderful tidbit. Juanita comes to life. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, we got, we got Mary Luna popping in <laughs> during Secret Times. My favorite is like, she takes out her room while they're in school and walking <laughs> in and out of the room. Snacking, like, having a snack. Yeah. <laughs> but she's just like Juanita in that sense where she just pops in at these like crazy like obscure times she's a little bit like Juanita in that way but we as we get the origin of Juanita that was the best yeah Yeah. we get to see all the little little nuggets the little gnomes and again uh, the nods that are such a a wonderful tip of the hat to what on my block has brought yeah 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 definitely well, we talk about um, this cliffhanger that we get left with for the finale. Um, we talked about the check and what, what it can do for Gloria and her family. She, there's caveats to it, just like there was caveats like you were talking about with right. scholarship. Mm-hmm. But she can either, you know, she has to be able to spend it, but she can't gain anything from right. it. Mm-hmm. So my instant reaction was, to you know like you said to to help her father with her with his cancer treatment mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the group sort of <laughs> sent <it> up too long, <laughs> trying to figure out what, what's going on and we end up with a whole other um set up for another murder mystery potentially mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i wanted to ask a little bit about kind of where where you where we leave things and and where you hope uh, we will take Mary Luna when we get a season two for Free Ridge because we don't know what happened. Um, we're left with uh, a lot of lingering um, energy and a lot of <laughs> lingering thoughts about what we can process and where this series can take us. Yeah. We have yeah. another resurrection? <laughs> should, we, should we do another? <laughs> My lips are sealed. I am <laughs> saying nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. I know <laughs> nothing. <laughs> it's just a. It's just the show is just a sh- refreshing series that people who are younger who have already watched on my block can now start like they feel like they're their own crew or have their start their own crew or be a part of the crew and then it kind of continues to kick things off and and it goes sort of translates from screen to reality and we can find our own mysteries or find our own family find our own uh roller world money to chase after <laughs> hey yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I like that it offers um that same kind of feel that when i was much younger that i would want to kind of chase after just as much as it offers to teenagers or you know anyone who watches watches it today that it it has that that great um transcending way that it's not just a certain demographic yes of course obviously it can be teenagers in high school now but for people who are my age or much older than that or people who are middle age, you know people it yeah. for each one of us in that regard yes mm-hmm. we can feel like we're nancy mm-hmm. drew or we can feel like we're part of the crew <laughs> exactly 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 and how the shows um kind of tandem off back and forth with each other in terms of scene and and where it goes because you can't you it, if you are an online block fan you cannot assume that free ridge is going to go that same route because you get a whole bunch of different flavors you know same tone but different flavors uh and that that makes it exciting too and i noticed that um i think it was last week we were number four in the top 10 for netflix and on my block was trending again. And I'm, I, I got excited 